Installing a kitchen hood with core is not entirely different from a conventional hood, but there are a few features that require special consideration. As always, it's important to schedule a pre-construction meeting with a captive air service technician to review your site before beginning work, and make sure to carefully read your installation drawings. Before installation, there are a few things to check to ensure the space is ready for a hood. The utility cabinet on the end of the hood houses the hood controls, factory installed water manifold, a surfactant tank, and this is where the power, water, and controls connections are made. This cabinet can be located on the left or right side of the hood, or in another location, depending on your application. Because this is where all rough-ins will terminate, it's very important to identify where the cabinet will be located by reading your captive air installation drawings before roughing in your surfaces. You may also have end-to-end -end or back-to-back -back hoods, or several independent hoods in one kitchen. Those hoods are each designed for individual locations and must be installed in those specific locations because of airflow, fire suppression, cooking equipment, and structural designs. Verify that each of these hoods are in the correct location before installing. The hood uses two separate water lines connected to a factory installed manifold at the top of the hood. The hot water line is used strictly for the hood self-cleaning feature. This line must meet both pressure and temperature requirements as listed. The building sprinkler system is used for core in the event of a fire. This line must meet pressure requirements as well. If the building isn't equipped with a sprinkler system, core can also be connected to a supervised domestic water line. If your water pressure and temperature values don't meet the requirements, simply contact your Captive Air sales rep. Captive Air offers solutions to get you to the required specifications. Next, verify that structural supports have been installed to support the hood. These supports are specified by the building design team and are installed by the general contractor. The dimensions for the hood supports are included in your Captive Air installation drawings. Verify that all the necessary drains for the hood have been roughed in by the plumbing contractor. At this point, power, gas, data, and water lines should have been roughed in to the correct locations. Make sure that electrical conduit has been installed for the gas valve shutoff. If the valve is installed under the hood, the conduit should be watertight. Also, the conduit for the manual activation device should be roughed in. Always verify the location of the manual activation device with your local code officials before installing. Local building and fire codes may require specific clearance to combustibles, so check with your local code officials to ensure you meet all requirements. You're now ready to install the backsplash using a very generous amount of high-quality construction adhesive. Generally, the backsplash should extend 18 inches to the sides and above the top of the hood to meet clearance to combustibles requirements. Confirm your clearance to combustibles requirements with your local code officials and by reviewing your construction drawings before installing the backsplash. Use the factory provided trim to neatly and tightly connect the backsplash panels. The trim is designed to allow the backsplash to expand and contract under normal cooking conditions while preventing the joints from separating. Simply mark the location of your hood, add the clearance to combustibles space, start installing your backsplash on one end, and work your way to the other. Move your hood into position on the floor. Plumb up from the hood supports to the structural supports in the ceiling. Mark and drill 5 8 inch holes in the ceiling supports, and hang the threaded rod with a nut and washer on the bottom, and two nuts and a washer on top. Using lifts or duct jacks, you can now safely lift the hood into place and secure with two nuts and a washer under each factory welded hanging bracket on the top corners of the hood. All hanging hardware, threaded rods, nuts and washers must be half inch, grade five or better, and all nuts torqued to 57 foot-pounds with a torque wrench and crow's foot. Check your captive air installation drawings for the specific height the hood should be above the floor. During construction, it's a good idea to use a walk board or other measures to make sure the hood doesn't become damaged. The makeup air plenum can now be hung into place using high quality threaded rod. The plenum should also be fastened to the hood using self-tapping screws.
Don't forget to install the PSP to hood connection brackets at the top of the hood in plenum. These brackets should also be installed using self-tapping screws. Next, install the ductwork to the exhaust and makeup air fans. It's always best to install the ductwork before any other piping. The exhaust duct must be installed at specific slopes shown in the construction drawings to allow for grease drainage. If you're using non-insulated ductwork, the clearance to combustibles area will need to be protected around the ductwork as well. Make sure adjustable dampers are installed on each makeup air inlet. These dampers are very important for balancing airflow during hood operation. If your hood comes with an air conditioned plenum or ACPSP, connect the building air conditioning ductwork to the plenum. Again, it is very important that adjustable dampers are installed on all inlets. Now it's time to connect the hot water and sprinkler lines. Once the water is hooked up, the hot water line must be insulated. The self-cleaning drains can be piped to the floor, a floor sink, a mop sink, or any other line that runs to the building's grease collector. These drains can be piped in copper by the plumbing contractor, or piped using a piping kit provided by Captive Air. These drains should never be piped using plastic pipe. Now you're ready to start making the electrical connections. Make sure that power wiring from Captive Air's variable frequency drives are running individually to each fan to prevent interference. Each fan should have its own conduit. Never run the wiring from multiple fans into the same conduit. The resulting interference will greatly reduce the lifespan of the motors or the variable frequency drives. Hood lighting and plenum lights may need to be field wired depending on your specific application. These lights are to be wired into the hood control panel. For duct fire sensors, it's critical to use the electrical components provided by Captive Air to ensure the correct wire, conduit, and connectors are used. If your hood system was designed with more than one duct fire stat, the fire stat will need to be field wired in a loop as shown. Both ends of the loop can share the same conduit. All fire stat and manual activation device wiring inside the clearance to combustibles area should be high temp wiring with high temp connectors provided by Captive Air, even if the wires are piped into conduit. Don't forget to wire your manual activation device. Each of these individual wires should be placed on each side of the screw in the connector block as shown. Do not twist the wires together before inserting into the block. There should be two pairs of wires running from the manual activation device to the control panel for added safety. There are two contactors included with your device. Use the normally open contactor indicated by the NO on the contactor. The clear plastic cover on the manual activation device is required and should remain on the device at all times. At this point, the gas valve should be installed and connected to the core controls. Note, some gas valves cannot be installed vertically. The gas valve comes with a screen that must be installed in the line to ensure that debris does not get into the line and keep the gas valve from closing. The gas valve can also be ordered in low voltage or line voltage options. Verify the voltage requirement on your drawing and on the gas valve before connecting power and energizing. The vertical end panels can be installed next. Set the panel into place, into the aligning studs at the bottom edge of the hood, and adjust the feet. Then, mark the holes in the backsplash, remove the panel, and drill the holes. Insert the retainers into the drilled holes and reset the panel into place. Finally, insert and tighten the screws. Now you can install the hood wrapper, which gives the hood a finished look. Finally, remove all the protective plastic and clean the entire hood. Thoroughly inspect the entire hood, making sure everything is secure and ready to use. All unprotected wires must be neatly secured away from the hood surfaces in order to protect them from heat. The top of the hood should be clean and free of any excess materials. Surfactant was included in your hood package. Fill the surfactant reservoir and leave the rest of the surfactant on site. The surfactant is automatically used during the hood self-cleaning cycle and the owner or end user will need to periodically replenish the system. Now it's time to call your local Captive Air service technician to perform a system design verification or SDV. 
A captive air service technician will start up and adjust your system, balance the airflow, as well as test the wash and fire system for proper operation before your final inspection. Captive Air's service system design verification is included with every core hood. For questions anytime during the installation or operation of your core system, please contact Captive Air Service.